Families Need Fathers is a national charity set up 46 years ago to support parents who are having difficulties with arrangements for their children after separation. There's various charities. What's special about Families Need Fathers? Well, Families Need Fathers have a wealth of expertise and experience, and we've been doing this for a very long time. And our focus is in particular on assisting the parents who are having difficulties who are usually the non-resident parent, the parent who has difficulties making getting arrangements for access. But at the same time, all that expertise means we can try and help people to come to amicable arrangements without having to escalate and and, and do things in that way. And um, what uh, I think what's fascinating about your charity is that you work at two ends of the spectrum, don't you? You, you lobby government and also you have individual groups, volunteer groups around the country. Is that right? Yes, families need fathers really have two elements. One is kind of helping people, a service element, a, pa a pastoral care element. We kind of help with the emotional side and as well as the practical side of family separation. But the other one is there's an awful lot which is wrong, whether wh whichever parent you are, there's an awful lot which is wrong with the way family justice operates, with the way child maintenance operates, with all the various issues around around family separation. And so we lobby and we campaign for changes and improvements so, so, that, so that they actually work better for the, ultimately for the children as well as for the parents. And what kind of things have you managed to achieve, do you feel, the most recent uh, wins, if you like? Because it's a difficult area to gain any, any uh, success, isn't it? Family law and, and the way well, these things work. Yes, I mean, th there's such a lot of work to do that it's kind of it's kind of you point at some of the wins and you kind of think, well, hmm, we haven't done anything like enough. But but we have got an extra focus from uh, the judiciary and government on issues around um, around the importance of shared parenting whenever that is possible, whenever it is safe and reasonable, and why children benefit from both parents. And I think there's been some real progress, a recognition. Um, legislation has recognised that shared parenting is important, even though the presumption of shared care isn't yet there in law but in that way, in those terms. Um, at the same time, we've done quite a lot to try and help people like CAFCAS, the Children Family Court Advisory Service, to look at some of the specific types of problems that many of our service users experience um, and help them to get a focus, to realise that there are difficulties and problems that they have to address. Um, and, and we've made some real progress in some of that area. There are many, many things which need to still happen. So, for example, um, family justice, on average, official figures which underestimate these things say that it takes 28 weeks to get from an application to an outcome. Well, that's an age for an eight-year-old. So there's an awful lot of work to try to get the justice systems to be fit for purpose. So, Because prolonging it doesn't help the child. And actually, it doesn't help either the mum or the dad or anybody, you know, any of the parents, grandparents, anybody involved. Because all of that time, tensions build up, friction builds up. So, so there's a huge amount of work to do to make it right. So you've been making a, a positive influence on the, sort of the culture of the judiciary, even if things haven't necessarily gone into law yet, things are, you feel things are beginning to shift. Um, what are, you, you were at a very important meeting today, weren't you? And we, in fact, we genuinely haven't even had a chance to catch up about it. Can you give me a catch up about what it was and, and what happened? Well, today we had a meeting with the Department of Work and Pensions team working on child maintenance. Um, we're in the middle of COVID-19 pandemic. There's a lot of issues which are going on with the department. They've had to switch an awful lot of their resources out of child maintenance and in, into universal credit. And, and there's a lot of scope for friction at the moment because you've got parents who have lost their jobs, who lost their income, has been reduced, they're on furlough. Um, and, and that in turn means that the receiving parent is not getting as much either. So, so there's a lot of problems and issues. So what we have, for example, learned is that, that for the time being, they're having to accept what people are saying. Um, they, they haven't got time and resources to check everybody's statements about their income and so on. So they're accepting what they're saying on face value. Uh, but of course, they will catch up. So if you try and fiddle it, they might well catch up with you afterwards. Um, but, but there's also quite a lot of work which they, they, that they've recognised they need to do. Because, for example, they won't adjust the amount that a parent has to pay unless it falls below 25% of their income. But anybody on furlough 
will have a 20% reduction in their income. So it's just short of having it reviewed um, and they will have to wait till their next reassessment, which might be 10 months away before they will look at it. And that's a real problem. It's not maybe such a big problem if you're somebody on £50,000 a year, but if you're somebody on 10, 12, 15,000 pounds a year income, how do you cope with a 20% reduction in your income whilst you still have to pay the same rent and your own cost of living and so on, whilst finding that they won't adjust the amount that you have to pay? So, you know, what they've definitely said is that they're going to look at this further and they understand the problem because they've had a lot of people come back to them and say that they're struggling and their difficulties. Um, but but that's a, an example of one of the areas that we can um, help to get a focus. And another example will be there's an awful lot of people, I've been over two million people I think now who've gone on to universal credit because they've just lost their jobs. But there are difficulties, for example, with the interaction between universal credit and child maintenance um, in that when those people start to look for jobs, if they're on low incomes, they might end up less well off working than not working. And that then doesn't help the child or the parent who's got the main care of the child or anybody. So so, so we've had some really, really useful and important discussions on that, um, which need to be progressed further into getting some firm policy changes, really. Thank you. And what uh, just before you go, what you're going to be with us on the Divorce TV show on Friday. What do you think? What, what should we chat about? We've got 10 minutes. There's so much that we could talk about. What do you think would be the really good topics to discuss? Well, um, I, I think um, talking about issues around child maintenance would be a very good idea. We could discuss how the formula works, how it doesn't work, that where, where actually the, the formula help might encourage people to get into disputes and conflict in the way that it's assessed at the moment, and where perhaps each parent needs to recognise the failings of it because the system is quite rigid, it's quite a blunt instrument. And, and if both parents can understand each other's perspective a little bit more, then, then you know, one of those kind of popular words at the moment is forbearance. If each can kind of accept that they've got problems um, and not simply assume that everybody's trying to get one over the other, then actually you can then put the child at the centre and do the right thing and get come to an agreement which doesn't involve going to the child maintenance service, um, which, which yeah. just escalates things. Great, so we'll have a focus on that and maybe talk about uh, the, the different groups that are around the country. You've got a free helpline. So we'll cover all that tomorrow, I look, on Friday, sorry. So I look forward to seeing you then on the Divorce TV show. Thank you so much, Michael. Lovely, look forward to seeing you then. Bye.